our education reform now is following uh, the national strategies. As you may know, the six national strategies. For instance, some, a lot of schools say that they need uh, a bit of more resources, for instance, the internet, the infrastructure of uh, maybe some computers. The government is going to uh, basically provide the education. There are already some private sectors that are doing really well. Welcome to Thailand Today. I'm Kusuma Yotasmut. After years of education reforms failing to improve students' learning, education reforms which benefit all sectors of society, including Thailand's most vulnerable children, must be in absolute priority. Is there still a long way to go before students in Thailand begin receiving the education? deserve. Our guest today is a key person who bears a huge weight of expectation to kickstart real reform of the country's education system. Our, and our program is very pleased to have His Excellency Mr. Tirakiet Jalan Setasin. He is a Minister of Education to explain about ICU schools project which will offer Thai children a better future. We are honored to welcome His Excellency Dr. Tirakiet Jaren Setasin. He is the Education Minister, Ministry of Education. Swadika. Swadika. Well, welcome back here. Thank again you very much. With Thank a you. very again very important topic. Yes. But to our audience when we talk about ICU you're always thinking it's something to do with medication. But today, we're going to do with uh, education. And the person who's in charge of this is a doctor who is happened to be a minister. Yes. <laughs> right? OK, so I see you school is your brainchild. You're the one who thought about it's it. It's one of the uh, important projects mm -hmm. for this uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. Particularly, is in one of the important policies as well. Yes. Uh, our education reform now is following uh, the national strategies. Mm -hmm. As you may know, the six national strategies: mm -hmm. the strategies for security, security. for competitiveness, uh -huh. uh, for human capital investment, okay. for reducing inequality, mm -hmm. and for growth with uh, friendliness to environment. Mm -hmm. And the last is uh, the government sector's reform, mm. the administration reform. Okay. So if you look at all the strategies, yes, one of the most, again, significant things that we should do mm. is to reduce inequality. We have about 3,000, no, 30,000 schools mm -hmm. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And the unit for intervention should be mm -hmm. based at schools. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, of course, we are doing so many things, as I have discussed with you. Yeah. Uh, reform yes, of yes. English language, mm. STEM education, mm. uh, and uh, teachers' reforms, and so on. Yes. But we must not neglect uh, the schools in faraway places. Mm. And when I came in, I found that out of about a third of 30,000 schools, mm -hmm. uh, actually are in poor shape. They are barely surviving if you like. Uh, they're struggling in all sorts of areas like resources, shortage of teachers, uh, the falling standards, uh, all kinds. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, having a policy that use top-down uh, mm -hmm. strategies, mm -hmm. I look at two bottoms, mm -hmm. the bottom-up approach mm -hmm. and uh, bottom end uh, of the spectrum of schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's where I choose my target. Mm. And so I use a medical metaphor like ICU, that's right. uh, mm. which stands for intensive care unit. And also, I want to see you. I want to see you. So I have been visiting uh, uh, the schools mm. that are now called ICU. Mm. Uh, the way de we define ICU is that we ask all the schools. Uh to submit the applications. Oh, I was about to ask, uh, how did you know? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a fixed criteria. Mm -hmm. I said, if you think you are hardly surviving, mm -hmm. 
mm. you you're about to if you like to uh, collapse mm. or you cannot function well mm -hmm. uh, and I give them examples for instance if they have very very poor standards of owned results mm. uh, if they have poor attendance mm. if they have uh, big dropout rates mm. uh, health care uh, everything, everything that they think will yeah. make the school non-functional mm. uh, or not being able to function well mm -hmm. and need intensive help immediately. Okay. And this is uh, supposed to be government? The private? public schools. It's a public school. Yeah. But then interestingly, mm -hmm. then vocational schools, mm -hmm. when they heard about this, mm -hmm. uh, 900 of them uh, want to yeah. join as well. And they have identified about two or 300 that will need ICE's intensive care treatment. Mm -hmm. The reason I do this is then you can, number one, reallocate the resources that usually are top-down approach okay. uh -huh. to those who are in need straight away. Okay. So it's a strategy for reducing inequality. Mm -hmm. And then you upgrade them. Mm -hmm. So I've been going around and surprisingly, mm -hmm. initially people think mm -hmm. that the name carries some bad connotation. People want, don't want to sign up because they think they're not ICU or they feel ashamed. Mm. But I have in front of me uh -huh. uh, 4,800. Wow. Uh, it's about nearly 5,000 schools okay. in Thailand. Needed. Have applied. Oh, have applied. Have applied. Uh, no, we estimated about a, a third. That means about 10,000. Mm. But I have allocated initially about 3,000 because that's what I thought maybe mm. we can cope with because mm. We don't give empty promises. Mm. Uh, mm. And I've been visiting schools. Mm. I go down to rural areas mm -hmm. to see schools. Mm. And so already mm. there are 5,000 uh, uh, schools mm. applying to be uh, to be an ICU. And mm. I, could, I called it kind of ICU beds instead beds. of schools. <laughs> so if what? you bet, ICU oh, okay. beds. Okay. So that means yeah. if they come in and yeah. they get their problem solved, yeah. Uh, they're out of ICU, then there's a vacant bed, oh. then we can take more. Oh. So it's not a fixed quarter. Mm -hmm. So all of them apply, so mm -hmm. my policy now changed in that I said, look, now that they, they volunteer mm. to be treated, mm. so we must give them help. Mm -hmm. So I now expand to 5,000. Mm. Yeah, uh, yes. And the, uh, the civil servants, the you know, the people who work in ministry mm. now have helped me a lot. Oh. They now have uh, reallocated resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, when well, you said that we have these 5,000 yeah. applied yeah. and you're ready to, to go over yes. for, to these to places. Help them. How about the, that means covering the teacher also? Because yes. we're so worried about the, the quality. Yes. Sorry Look, to say that. Okay, but, uh, let me tell you the range of problems they have that they would consider themselves mm -hmm. being in ICU. Mm -hmm. For instance, some, a lot of schools say that they need uh, a bit of more resources, mm -hmm. for instance, the internet, the infrastructure mm -hmm. of uh, maybe some computers. Advanced uh, some schools may need one or two more teachers. I mean, they realize yeah. that we cannot give them everything they want. Mm -hmm. Because my criteria is not to make them completely healthy, to okay. make them out of ICU so that they can function and then start to walk and Instead help themselves. Collapsing. Yes. Mm. Uh, and, and then we show that we are not forgetting them. And also, uh, you know, the range of problems, for instance, uh, say if you like shortage of resources, mm. shortage of teachers, mm. uh, some are very simple. Mm. One school applies and say, if only, if only we got rid of the head teacher, <laughs> then they'll be out of ICU, and they mean it. <laughs> head because master, yeah, mean? because they they have management problems, uh, okay. and the person responsible for putting the school in ICU uh -huh. is the head. Mm. So if we can get rid of the head, then they're out of <laughs> ICU. So, so you know, anybody is entitled to be mm. in ICU. You mm. can be rich, you can be poor, mm. you can be fat, you can be thin, mm. you know. You can be initially healthy, but then become unhealthy. Mm. You know, you can be attacked mm. with acute illnesses. Mm. So, so I find this policy is quite an eye opener. Mm. When I go down, uh, I find that the budgeting that we are now doing in our ministry mm. has contributed unknowingly 
to the inequality, because to, if, the, to the inequality, inequality, to the problems to start Where with. Where is going then? Because if it's top-down approach, okay. we think they should need this, they should have this, oh. and we allocate resources according to the uh, central, central bureau, oh, yeah. then you are actually not listening to the people mm. on the ground. Uh, okay. People on the ground may face different oh. problems. They may not be heard. Mm -hmm. uh, so by opening this up, so surprisingly, uh, to the contrary, we got more applications than we expect. And I'm pleased. It, that's uh, why I was asking well, you have a beaming eyes for that. And that yes, I'm pleased. And then at least we can bring up, bring them up to, to, the to scratch. Yeah. yeah. Then they can s start moving on. Very good. Otherwise, yeah. you know, they're still behind. This 5,000 is all over the country. All over the country. And interestingly, I'm pleased because uh. very few in Bangkok. Very few in Bangkok. That yeah, means, yeah, and mostly that, in rural areas, in rural areas. Uh. Now on Monday, I went to see three ICU schools mm. in Skonakorn. Mm. Mm. And the interesting thing is, they're very sensible. They ask for a few things. Mm. For instance, one school says they only need to upgrade their library because oh, uh, people shouldn't start to drop out. They don't have mm. access mm. to good That's resources. Mm. And once I've done that, then I mm. met with a group of business people mm. in Skonakorn. Mm. And now they're going to have campaign wow. for Pacharat. That means uh. business people to help with ICU schools. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a kick-off event mm -hmm. uh, headed by or presided over by the governor of Skonakon mm -hmm. on the 10th of March mm -hmm. to mobilize resources. Mm -hmm. and, and this project, uh, in fact, uh, when I asked them to apply, I asked mm -hmm. them to diagnose as well with the help of the director of the districts and then involve the parents mm, and the people great. in the community uh. to help them diagnose, oh. to help them treat mm. uh, the illness uh -huh. uh, or, or cure the problem as uh -huh. well. Uh -huh. And one, for instance, one uh, operator or one local authority uh -huh. volunteers to pay for a teacher that the school wants. Oh, nice. So not only is not top down or mm. bottom up, mm. Uh, but we also involve and engage mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of fancy words like area-based. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to uh, involve the community. Mm -hmm. But those ideas remain abstract mm -hmm. unless you mm -hmm. put into practice. So mm -hmm. I find this policy. Mm -hmm. The name sounds a bit off-putting, mm -hmm. but it's turned out to be very good. Mm -hmm. So this is considered to be part of the reform? Yes. Because unless you, you know, one of the strategies for reform is mm. n n the government say, mm. do not leave anybody behind. Mm. We leave no one behind. Mm. And this is a concrete proof mm. that I'm not leaving anybody behind. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just paying lip service. Mm. So I bring them up and then, yes, it's, a, it's one of the main, mm. unless you help those who are in need. Mm. You know, your, po your resources are going to go to uh, uh, wrong places. Mm, mm. So probably any concrete result of uh, expectation to get this I hope done? so. Uh, for instance, if they... It's to be short period you know, Because once they're in ICU bed, mm. we can identify the problems. Mm -hmm. They identify the problems themselves. We help them to identify the mm. problems, mm. identify the treatment. And once we deliver the treatment, then we monitor. Uh, whether they're out of ICU bed. Mm. And then you see, we are not setting KPI, again, mm. top-down approach. Mm. We ask them, so what do you think you want to achieve? Mm. And that is your KPI, mm -hmm. to get you out of ICU. Mm -hmm. We are here to facilitate, to provide help needed. Mm -hmm. And it's also has given me opportunities to rearrange mm. and reallocate my budget mm. or the ministry budget. Is it for the first time that uh, schools all over the country, especially the affected and the most uh, crucial ones, are uh, uh, facing this? I mean, they're receiving this? I, I think so. I have looked around mm. uh, and I, I must say, you know, if you look at, this is not my original idea, mm -hmm. I must tell you. Yeah. It's actually. But I never heard it's, of. It's, it's actually from <laughs> His Majesty the King. Oh, oh yes. Uh, 
about four or five years ago mm -hmm. when he wrote several messages mm -hmm. to the Privy Councillors mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, given to the Ministry in the past mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, education reforms and so on. Mm -hmm. And His Majesty the King Rama the Ninth himself mm -hmm. set an example mm -hmm. by allocating resources mm -hmm. himself. He used his personal resources mm -hmm. And then he told the privy councillors, start with ICU schools. Did he use yes. the word? Yes. So I, in fact, I'm uh, eternally grateful okay. to His Majesty yes. the King, mm. Rama the Ninth, mm. uh, for, in fact, he has then uh, basically transformed or helped so far mm -hmm. about uh, 155 schools. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel that it's it's his government's duty to carry on this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is probably the first time on a large scale basis, mm -hmm. and yeah. and I I have a, mm -hmm. you know I have a lot to try to publicize it in the sense that, as you said, people may misunderstand the name or they may not understand, but I find that by calling it this way, people start to be attracted yeah, and uh, interested. Yeah. And it's something like uh, you got out from a dream or something, yes. what is she talking about? Yes. And more concerned, I think this, this is one of the ways to, to strike uh, yes. them yes. in another way. And the Prime Minister recently also says that the public reasons of National Keeping Council, mm -hmm. uh, Peacekeeping Council uh, task is, is, or the government, this mm -hmm. government particularly, mm -hmm. is to reduce inequality. Mm -hmm. And this is the main, main uh, kind of policy. Mm -hmm. You have to ask after all the reforms, mm -hmm. who should benefit most? Isn't that the people, you know, at the grassroots level? Mm -hmm. The people uh, at the school level in terms of education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they should benefit we most. We could see because uh, so far, you know, we could see some time on TV that uh, some of them you know, barefooted to school. With yes, them. yes. those things they, they need because they have to support themselves. Yes, yes. But that's the way I, you can. Yes, you know. when I tell you one example that yeah. I saw, yeah. a school that you know in secondary schools they don't get free meal, free lunch. Ah, no, they? no. Uh, the free meal regulation is only for for primary school levels. Okay, oh. so one school which is very very poor uh, says that what we need to get kids to study, okay. get kids out of ICU. Okay is one of the measures they want is to help with lunch. Mm. Uh, and then I bring the authorities down mm. as well. And we discover that there's some funds, uh, and then there's some funding that we can have access mm. that can help mm. uh, with school lunch. Mm. So one problem That's solved, uh, something like that. Mm. It may look simple to us, yeah. but unless we go and see them, Mm. I see you. I see you. Uh, unless you. we we give them the opportunity to let us know, then we won't be able to to access them. Mm -hmm. Your yes, Excellency, if we set up into a, a, a year term, like mm. twelve months term, yes. so uh, the country education reform is a real. I mean, your real realistic goal. Yes. Because this is this is something which is not. Okay. To wait for a new uh, next uh, government or something. It yes. Be done right why, why don't you do? I, I give you a, a very interesting figure. If you look at the, if you like the measurement PISA, for ah, instance, okay. and people are saying Thailand is very below. Mm -hmm. Yes, we mm -hmm. perform mm -hmm. quite badly, uh, on rank fifty-four. Mm -hmm. But when I analyze the data, which I presented in the national forums as well, mm -hmm. it shows a big gap. Mm -hmm. Those schools who perform very badly, mm -hmm. uh, about say 300 basically marks oh, okay. uh, against the 600 marks as the top schools perform. Okay. Uh, in the last 10 years, the gap remains the same. It's interesting mm -hmm. because unless you tackle this inequality, the mm -hmm. business score will never improve. Mm -hmm. And people say, let's change the curriculum. The poor and the rich learn from the same curriculum. <laughs> Let's change the STEM education, but remains too abstract. The good schools do not need any change because they're doing already well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's train teachers, but where? Uh. You have to target those mm -hmm. who are in need. Mm -hmm. 
so mm. then you make the policy concrete mm. and the byproduct byproduct by product is you know uh. you know the f big flooding in mm. the south okay we now we ask them to be included in the ICU so that we can help the physical structures mm. uh, repair them straight away because they're barely surviving since you touched this uh, matter about the south so how about uh, well we don't know about um, the mentality of being like of learning or what or okay. circumstantially problem Very, <laughs> you touch probably one of the most important points in education reform mm. which probably will take another session to go but i'm happy uh -huh. you know look poverty mm. is not destiny it is not yes. okay mm -hmm. now but poverty can prevent you from having a learning mindset mm -hmm. Okay, unless you do something about it. Mm -hmm. The PISA results show mm -hmm. that in Vietnam, which now mm -hmm. perform really, really well, mm -hmm. the lowest 10% of Vietnam, mm -hmm. the performance is better than that of the top 10% of OECD countries. That means poor, the poorest kids in Vietnam mm -hmm. perform much better than the richest kids in the, developing, in, in the developed world. What does okay. that tell you? Mindset, mindset, the learning attitude, as you said, mm. the mentality. The Vietnamese kids want to learn. They want mm. to succeed mm. in this world. Mm. So that's my next step. Mm. So the material resources are necessary, necessary mm. but not sufficient mm -hmm. Mm. to push forward the reform. Mm. One also mm. has to do... Uh, basically to do the uh, yeah. students' motivation, mm -hmm. reform, and mm -hmm. so on. I think the family background also has a part in it. Yes, but again, it's not, uh, it's not uh, destiny, but it's important. Mm -hmm. That means we have to work with families as well, uh -huh. family, parental involvement, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you go down to the root, grassroots mm -hmm. level, that's mm -hmm. what you see. Mm -hmm. okay. So as an education min minister, so any other priorities that you're going to build like to help like to build up democracy responsibility okay. and accountable society you know i i follow the uh, national strategies mm -hmm. you know for instance the strategy for for increasing uh, competitiveness mm -hmm. that's why you see english mm -hmm. stem education mm -hmm. policies mm -hmm. when you talk about human capital investment mm -hmm. now you see preschool uh, in mm -hmm. uh, preschool education uh, investment and that is also uh, basically mandated by the uh, new constitution that is mm -hmm. coming out mm -hmm. uh, yes there mm -hmm. there would be we are preparing mm -hmm. for the preschool yeah. education uh -huh. reform uh -huh. doesn't mean the government is going to uh, mm -hmm. basically provide the education there are already some private sectors that are yeah, doing yeah. really well yeah. We need to help them. You need to prepare uh, for Thailand 4.0? Yes, oh, yes, but that is for the competitiveness okay. strategies. Uh -huh. One has to really see the difference because mm. they take different approaches mm. to tackle different mm. uh, problems. Mm. So the competitiveness, so those who are already good and they want to be great mm -hmm. and to be able mm -hmm. to compete and go. But those who are still very, very behind, mm -hmm. they're at a poor level. You need to bring it up to mm. fair level. Mm. So when you talk about poor, 4.0 there mm -hmm. are still those who are in yeah. 1.0 uh -huh. a lot still in 2.0 <laughs> so only those who are at 3.0 yeah. can move on to 4.0 uh -huh. well there's a lot to talk about and ex ex uh, our time is up now but um, please continue with your great job thank and, you very and much let us know how much you can yes uh, yes any other introduction yes. Of that. yes all right well we are now our program i thank you so much to his excellency mr uh, doctor sorry his Excellency Dr. Thirakiet Thirun Setasin, Education Minister, Minister of Education. Thank you so much, sir, Thank for you. being here. Good guy. So, take up. His Excellency Mr. Thirakiet Thirun Setasin, Minister of Education. Thank you so much for being here with us and shared your concept of ICU schools and Thailand's education reforms. Thank you for watching Thailand today. I'm Kusuma Yotas. Smooth hope to see you again. Same place, same time. Sadiqah.